is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're gonna be tying up a floss body stimmy. This is a stimulator pattern attributed to Jim Slatterly, Randall Kaufman, uh, who made this uh, uh, pattern that it is today. And with new materials being available and uh, so many tires out there, we're able to make variations and tweak it uh, to our local waters and have fun with it. So let's start with a fire hole 718. Uh, this is a size number 12. I've got it in the vise, and we're going to be using a nano silk. This is by Semperfly. It's a 12 aught, and uh, I don't want to go any thinner than that because we're going to be using L Care. And if you go with like an 18 aught, you're going to actually be um, sometimes cutting that. Uh, the L Care is stronger than deer hair um, when you're using the nano silk, but uh, stick with a 12 aught or an 8 aught. So. We'll uh, work our, our silk all the way back to the bend of the hook and then we're going to be uh, tying in our tail. So we're just using some of this Nature Spirit. Uh, this is uh, some um, elk hair. Um, the color, I, I don't know because I actually threw away the package. I just, uh, I've had this in my bin. I really love this color. Uh, I guess I could look it up, but um, it's a really cool tan. It's got a little bit of an orange hue to it. So we're just going to remove the under fur, um, any stragglers, any shorter fibers that we, we don't want in there. I want kind of the uh, really solid um, hairs that uh, are going to provide a nice, good, firm, stiff tail. So um, we'll go ahead and I got a little bit more fluff on this than I like. So just use your fingers to pull that out. But we're going to go ahead and put this in our stacker and make sure that we get these tips aligned. Um, just give it a few taps on your, uh, your workbench. Um, just using a small size stacker and the amount of hairs, I don't really know, uh, probably 17 uh, and a quarter hairs is the perfect amount. And for the length of the tail, I'm just going to go with the hook gap and we'll place it right there at the bend where our thread is and then do some nice loose wraps working our way up to about the midsection. I'm gonna do a little bit of a larger head on this than I normally do, because um, I want it to just freaking float like a dream. So I'm just gonna make sure I got the, about halfway up the bend here, and we'll go ahead and tighten that down, and then pull these uh, fibers, uh, the hair forward, as I, I work back, and I'm not doing really super tight wraps at this point, but tighter than the way we worked up, and then we'll go ahead and make sure our tail looks good, and we'll pull those back and just trip them out, uh, trim out those uh, those hairs, the butt ends. And if you're really good, you can usually do it in two two cuts. But uh, I'm gonna have to flip my vise over here and get it in three. So usually dividing it on top and on bottom, you can get them pretty good. So we've got those uh, trimmed out now. We're just going to clean up this uh, body, make sure our uh, our L care is on the top of the shank. And I'm going to work my way back up to those butt ends, really trying to secure those down. And now I'm going to start doing some cranking wraps, uh, working my way up and down. And we are going to be doing a floss body. And so you want to make sure this body's clean. Now, a trick to getting this tail to kind of poof up and ride straight is I do over under wraps here. So I go under the under the elk hair tail and then I go over it with a couple loose wraps. They're not super tight because I don't want to flare them up. And then I just go under it and then over it, and that's kind of a little trick. I've seen other tires. Um, I think Charlie Craven does a, uh, a little hump in the back. Um, that would be, you know, really pushing it up. And uh, there, you know, this is just a little trick I do to kind of keep them grouped together and keep them up. So um, that looks pretty good. And it looks like I missed a butt end in there. I got an elk care I don't like. And so I'm just going to uh, cheat and trim that one hair out up towards where the tie-in point is. And there we go, it's gone. Now it's gonna get the likes. So there we go, there's our tail. Um, that looks pretty good. Um, I really like it. So let's go ahead and we're gonna be tying in some Semperfly floss. This stuff is awesome for these uh, these stimulators, they, it has a unique property, and I'll show you at the end of the video um, when we hit it with a UV light. It, it, it is, this particular uh, floss here just is awesome. So what you want to do is just, I, I usually tie in two pieces at a time, and I just tie it down um, the top of the shank. And at this point, I can look and see, using that floss, if I have any variations, any big humps on the top. You can see that's pretty clean, and so we'll go ahead and tie in some wire now. The wire is not going to be used for any uh, durability purposes. Um, the floss generally doesn't 
you know, come undone, but um, it's more to add a little bit of flash, a little bit of uh, segmentation and variation to this pattern, and it looks cool. So we'll tie that in on the, uh, on the top of the shank, right next to the floss, and then we'll end our thread up the midway point. So you can see we left enough room for a nice big head, but now what you want to do is grab these two pieces, and this first turn is the toughest, and then after that, you want to make sure those, uh, that floss is kind of laying flat. And then as you palmer it around, make sure that you don't twist it. Like um, I'm trying to keep it flat uh, as I work my way up and I have that uh, first piece leading the way and the second piece is kind of overlapping. And if you get a little bit of a hump, you can just adjust your wraps and use that floss to kind of fill that gap or to make the gap disappear. So um, pretty easy technique. That's why I like using two pieces and it also provides uh, you know, uh, a really good color and, um, you know, when it gets wet, you're not going to, uh, not that you're going to see the nano silk or the oak hair underneath, but it, you know, it eliminates that transparency as well. So now we're just going to take this wire and rib it up with uh, nice even wraps all the way up to our, uh, the end of our body and just make sure those uh, wraps are nice and even. Try and avoid hitting that hook point um, because when you're using a very fine wire like this, uh, it's 0.1 millimeter, it, uh, it will snap on that fine tip point um, sometimes. I've had it happen. So I try to avoid the point at all costs. So we'll tie that off and uh, we are done, well, halfway done with our, uh, our stimmy at this point. So let's just inspect that. It looks good. I really like that uh, orange. So, next uh, step here is we're going to be tying in the underwing. And with most of my underwings, I use Crystal Flash. You can use uh, CDC. Um, you don't even need an underwing, but uh, I, I like that flash. Something that's going to be laying on the top of the water underneath the, uh, the wing to give a little bit of a, uh, hey, here I am, come eat me uh, appearance. So, so, I've got about uh, eight crystal flash fibers here that I cut in half and doubled up and I'm trying to keep these on top of the shank as close as I can and uh, we're gonna have this wing normally I like to prop it up a little bit but I want this one to lay a little bit more flat along the body and so what I'm gonna do is put a little super glue down just to keep that thread um, gripping as I as I wrap up this uh, down the shank a little bit further and I'm gonna go a little bit onto the body, not too much. And what that does is that doesn't cause the wing to pop up as much, but causes that crystal flash to ride almost even with the body. And we've got the bend of the hook there that's going to you know, basically allow that wing to be up a little bit, but not a ton like in most of my um, stimulators that I tie. So this one might uh, ride a little bit uh, tighter to the water. Um, so. We're going to be using um, some Elcare for our overwing in the same color. I usually use the ratio of double the amount of hair for my uh, wing versus my tail. And so I, when I'm clipping that out, I just roughly grab double and uh, clean it out. At this point, you really want to make sure you get rid of those super short um, hairs um, because then you know they're not going to be long enough for the wing, especially on this size 12. And even if you're looking at like an eight or a 10 or a six, you know, you really want to make sure you get those short hairs out. And that comes down to selecting a quality um, Elcare uh, patch or, or hide. And uh, I've had really good luck with the, uh, the Nature Spirit uh, brand. So we're going to have those hairs line up halfway with the, uh, the, the, the halfway in the middle of the tail. And then I'll do a couple loose wraps and then start to crank down and then as I work my way on my fourth or fifth wrap I'll kind of fold half the fibers back and then palmer up just a little bit and then do another crank wrap and what that does is that's going to assist us in making our our taper of our head and then we'll come in now with our uh, scissors and we've got a nice mess here so we'll go ahead and start trimming out all these butt ends and shaping our wing and if you grab a couple of those wing fibers, that's okay. But uh, we really want to try to keep our, our nice aligned tips in place. Um, and we'll go ahead and just snip out as many of these butt ends as we can and work our way back. And um, if you've got some that are coming off to the side that uh, you, know, you can twist them back in place. Or at this point, if you've got a pretty heavy wing, you can go ahead and snip them out. Uh, that's your, your, your choice. 
but we'll go ahead now that it's nice and clean I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and do nice real securing tight wraps to really shape and form this head and I'm going to go up to the same point I did with my crystal flash because I want this wing to be um, riding a little bit lower not as propped up so that looks pretty good we'll cut our crystal flash a little bit longer than our wing and now we're ready to start getting into uh, building up and uh, finishing off this fly by the the head so we're going to tie in some uh, some rubber legs these are uh, size medium centipede legs by uh, Montana Fly Company they uh, hold up pretty good and uh, really help this fly orient properly and ride um, how I want it to by you know laying on top of the water so we'll go ahead and uh, twist this over to the other side and then uh, tie it in this way we're just using one piece and we're, uh, that looks pretty good and we can play around with the actual positioning of these later but you want to leave about a, a hook eye gap between the rubber leg and the eye and then um, on the back side I, I like to have these uh, the, the rear legs exiting about where the head is I'm going to do one wrap of dubbing behind it and now we can position these how we like you want them to ride about even with the wing there we go that looks pretty good so for this we're using a, uh, a Whiting Farms this is an orange uh, it's actually a Euro hackle but it's in a super small size and so it's, I almost say it's more like they're high and dry but um, this orange was just such a cool color and I really want this to be a, a head that pops and so for uh, the, the, the feather we're just going to uh, tie that in and then um, use a dubbing here for the underbody this is uh, in yellow and we're kind of trying to coordinate here maybe a yellow hot spot orange hot spot body but you never know what the fish are going to take I've had luck with no hot spots I've had luck with uh, everything being hot spots and I've had luck with uh, um, getting skunked so um, you never know every day is different water conditions are always different and so it's always good to have a lot of different uh, colors and variations in your box so you can rotate through and figure out uh, what is the uh, the fish targeting that day so what you want to do is make sure we're building a cone down so I'm going to build the head a little bit thicker um, back towards the back of this wing uh, or back of the head sorry up against the wing and then as I get up close to the eye we'll taper that down um, to make sure we've got a little bit of space to end this fly so you want to make sure you uh, um, leave a little gap there and I just put down a nice thread base so that we can get that um, tied off now as you're coming around this um, you want to make sure that uh, you get uh, at least one wrap behind both legs sometimes I do two and then I'm going to go in front of them on my next wrap and you can go as tight or as um, uh, the sparse what's the correct word <laughs> you don't you don't have to do touching wraps with your hackle um, it can be looking like a solid piece of hackle fibers palmer I like to leave a little bit of spacing and uh, you know you want about on a size uh, 12 here I got about six to eight wraps uh, you be the judge I've seen guys do upwards of 20 and I've also seen guys do three so um, you are the boss more hackle should help it float better but also adds bulk and uh, a different profile so things to consider when you're tying these up I think that a good medium um, medium amount of wraps is perfect so if you got any uh, fibers that uh, you trap down just trim those out um, that way when you're on the river trying to tie this on you're not having to also not only get your tippet through the eye of the hook but through eye of the hook plus fibers so I'm just going to grab these fibers and preen them back uh, with my hand and start building up a small head if you can't uh, grab these fibers at this 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 hackle at this point um, and be a little aggressive with it just imagine what the fish is going to do on that first bite it's going to hit it it's going to come undone so I like to really be aggressive with those um, hackle fibers they're it's a quality feather so you don't have to worry about uh, ruining them but I'm going to do a double whip finish making sure not to trap any uh, uh, hackle fibers as I'm doing my whip finish and there we go so we did a double whip finish there we'll trim out our thread and then we'll trim out this hackle the reason I do that last is I've had 
some come undone on the whip finish and then it's a nightmare so make sure those legs are in position and we'll go ahead and snip them they shouldn't <coughs> adjust too much when you're fishing these and you can leave them as long or as short as you want I might have trimmed those a little short but uh, that's usually how I like them at the end of the day so we'll put a little bit of UV resin on the bottom side of this to secure um, not only our, our head but also those the hackle fibers the dubbing it just kind of cements everything into place and we are going to see how cool that floss is so look at that it just it's got like a unique property it uh it reflects differently than um, it's almost like a flash or uv really cool stuff so there we go that is the floss body stimmy um, hundreds of different variations for stimulator patterns um, tie them up in the colors you like, add or subtract whatever you don't want, fish them, pierce some lips. Thanks for watching.